One of the things I find fascinating is looking through different textbooks, specifically pre-calculus textbooks since I'm teaching that class right now. And in one textbook, I saw this question. It said, given sine of theta equals 24 over 25, find the other five trigonometric function values. And I've got a method for doing that, and it makes sense, and if you check the back of the book, it works. But I see in another textbook another way of asking that question that, that maybe is more specific. Because what it didn't specify here is what theta could be, right? And like what quadrant it would, it would be in. So I see it also asked a different way. For this way, if we just draw a regular triangle, we're assuming that we're moving in the positive x direction if we had an x, x y axis written here, right? Um, and we just do opposite over hypotenuse and adjacent over hypotenuse to find all six um, trig functions, right? So I got, I got sine, I got cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent, all of them are there. We use the Pythagorean theorem. But the other way I've seen it done is this way. If sine of theta equals 12 over 13 and we've got theta between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So 90 degrees is less than theta, which is less than 180 degrees. And that gives us an important piece of information because now when we draw that triangle, we need to think about it differently. That wouldn't work here. Like if theta was, theta was between 90 and 180, right? This would be a different looking triangle, wouldn't it? So let's, let's, uh, let's think about that in terms of quadrants. So what quadrant will theta lie in? And so what's helpful is to go back again to our x, y axis. And let's just think about that. Between 90 and 180. Well, 90 degrees is here, so if we're opening up here. So the theta must be opening up somewhere over there, right? Because here's 180, here's 90, so somewhere between. That means it's in quadrant 2. All right, so it's, here's quadrant one, here's quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. And I've made brief mentions of this, but that, that has results here. So right here, if I were to pick any point, point out here, the x value is going to be negative, right? So our x value is negative, so it's negative x value and a positive y value. Well, in this case, that really means negative cosine and positive sine. And, and your book will, your book hopefully shows you that, regardless of what book you're using, um, in a clear way. And then um, I talked about reference angles, so right now we can, we can form our triangle right here. Right? We would use this one. But when we create this, we, here's our theta, right? So opposite over hypotenuse, but when we look at this cosine value, this should really be negative, shouldn't it? Because we've gone in the negative direction, and the only reason I know that is because it gave me a hint about theta. So when I solve this, I want to make sure that this value ends up being negative. Now how would I solve for that? Well, I'd use the Pythagorean theorem. I'd have 12 squared plus, I don't know, let's call this b, plus b squared equals 13 squared. All right, so 12 squared, if we forget what 12 squared is, you just jump on your calculator, 12 squared, we got 144, plus b squared equals 13 squared, if you forgot what that is, it's 169, all right, subtract 144 from both sides, it's just the Pythagorean theorem, gotta love that, b squared equals one, let's see, 169 minus 144, that's 25, square root of both sides and get b equals 5 in your calculator if you do the square root of 25 you get 5 but remember it's also b equals negative 5 and that actually matters here obviously the distance or the absolute value here would be 5 but we need to think of this value as negative right now because we're in quadrant 2 and that's going to matter and the question really says if that and that are true would it the rest of the question which i didn't write down says find the other values of the trigonometric functions so it's asking for cosine so we've got sine and i'll just write them all down here somewhere let's see sine of theta equals 12 over 13 cosine of theta would be then, according to our triangle, it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that would be negative 5 over, th over 13, right? The adjacent over the hypotenuse, which you wouldn't get if you didn't know this piece of information about where theta lies or what quadrant it is in. 
So, okay, uh, there's a lot of ways to put that too. I could also have said the cosine is negative, which means it would be in quadrant two or three, really. So it might tell you the cosine's negative and sine's positive, which means it would be in quadrant two. And those are all your clues. If it's telling you an X and a Y, it's telling you the cosine of theta is negative or positive or the sine of theta is positive or negative, and it'll tell you what quadrant you're in. So, and that's gonna help you when you're forming these little reference triangles. Um, all right, so what is, what is tangent then? So tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, so that would be 12 over negative five, right? And then cotangent, cotangent of theta is going to be the reverse of that, so that negative five over 12. And this is a nice one right now. I don't have any radicals. I don't have any square roots, so I don't need to rationalize any of these. I can just flip them over. Uh, cos cosine of theta, one over cosine of theta is secant of theta. SEC, that's secant of theta equals 13 over 5, so I'm going to make sure it's negative still. And then we've got cosecant. Cosecant is C, SC, cosecant of theta equals the reverse, so that's 13 over 12. So when you're doing these problems, like I said, it's interesting because you can get some answers um, that it's almost the same question, but not quite. I got these from different books. This is from one book, and this is what they wanted you to do, and this is from a different book. And they, they spell it out differently. They just go in a different order. It's not that one of them is wrong. It's just that they kind of progress in a different way when they're unraveling this information. Um, so hopefully that helps you decode a little bit of it. Um, again, going back to those reference angles, all this is surrounded with Sokotoa, Pythagorean theorem, understanding um, how, how we're moving around the circle here. Again, these are all positive, so we're moving in the counterclockwise position. Um, but I hope that helps you figure out how to do those problems.